You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Smash After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256. 256 1729. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Smash After Show. Hey, everybody, Bing is for doing, and we are doing Smash Season 2, Episode 1. Finally! <laughs> it has been a long wait. I am Tamara Berg. I am joined in studio by Sarah Mendoza. Hello, hello. Kendra Cabasov. Hello, we're back. <laughs> Kristen Carroll. Hey, guys. And we have Marissa Serafini engineering for us in the booth. Hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> on. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm so excited. We are so happy to be back <laughs> with Smash. It's been a long, long winter waiting, hasn't it it's been? been? Yeah, yes. a really long time. Good heavens. It feels like ages ago since we last did this together. Yeah. It was really hot outside when we last did it, and now we're freezing. So. And now it's hot inside. <laughs> right, exactly. Now it's hot in the studio. I don't know. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, in lots of ways, ladies. I'm just going to say. <laughs> okay, we have two hours put together into one episode on Broadway and the fall out. Um, a lot to cover, and full disclosure, I could not get to about 20 minutes of the show, so you guys are going to have to cover just a little part of it. You, <laughs> you caught me up, but there is a little bit I'm going to have to watch tomorrow morning because I was busy doing my Justified um, mm -hmm. podcast in the other room, and the, it was a little bit crazy this afternoon. So, um, <laughs> Our busy woman over so here. So <laughs> here we are, and we are ready to break it down. Okay, so let's talk straight out about the big story, which is Bombshell being in jeopardy. Um, the show opened with a little bit of a recap showing us what was going on over the song Moving On. Cut print moving on or is it moving on? What's the title of the song? Cut actually? print moving on. Cut print moving on. Great little tune. We'll talk mm. about that a little more later. But as it was going, we got to see that um, Karen and Ivy are n not, not on good terms. No. Mm -hmm. No speaking terms. Well, barely speaking terms. Right. Yeah. We saw that uh, Ivy has, m or Karen has moved and has a new roommate. Mm -hmm. um, that she's ripped up Dev's note. Ivy threw away a bottle of drugs. Um, and a whole bunch of other sort of wrap up stuff. Anything else that anybody saw that we need to really talk about in that wrap up? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, they kind of just showed everyone's faces again. You yeah. Know? It was, yeah. It was good because we kind of were like... A good oh, reminder yeah, so of where we left off. Yeah. And it was good to see a lot of the couples still together. Right. You know, Eileen was still with Nick and they showed that briefly and Sam is still with Tom and... Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. couples that aren't together, yeah, there are some, <laughs> rightfully so. Yes. There are some single ladies in town. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So the first thing that we learn is M Michael Swift wants to be let out of his contract. I I Ivy may not be renewed. Um, because she hasn't gotten the call yet, and then we hear ultimately that that bombshell is in jeopardy. That that they may not be actually making it to Broadway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's sucks. I guess for lack of another word in my head right now, it sucks for everybody involved because they've been working so hard, and Karen finally landed that role, and she killed it in Boston. And, um, you know, everybody was singing her praises in the press and Julia and Tom and Eileen are all happy about her performance. Mm -hmm. So it feels like everything's going to be great. Karen's going to get to live out this run of the show. And they're almost there. And now there's this other thing they have to worry about that could prevent it from happening. 
So it was just like another like, oh man, she was almost there. We're all rooting for her. And now she has to deal with this other thing that might get in the way. Right. So um, you guys have to help me out with this a little bit. So the, the part of the problem is there was a little issue of what theater we were going to be in. Then Eileen was able to get the theater, uh, the St. James Theater secured. And now the money's being called into question. Yes. Yeah. It, it wasn't initially, but then um, Eileen had a dinner with her ex-husband. or Jerry. To be mm -hmm. ex-husband. Well, no, it was with somebody else. And then he just snuck up like he normally does. And <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, they had an encounter and... Mm -hmm. um, it turned out, you know, it didn't turn out his way, so she left, and he got he sent a text message saying it's time to initiate Move the plan. Move forward with this plan, right? <laughs> so my question is, was it made clear? First of all, is his plan the financial problem plan, or was his plan the putting forward of Derek's problems, or or is he in behind both mm -hmm. of those things? I believe That's it has to do with. I know for sure the it's financial. the money. He's, the got, financial. he's got fingers in the financial. Although yeah. maybe that's the curve. Maybe we're supposed to, you know, we're meant to think that. And maybe it's something else. I thought it was because at the party, the reason Derek's lawsuit started was because that one guy was there and wrote up about the fact that Frank kind of screamed out that Derek had slept with everyone who was Marilyn. And then it kind yeah. of spiral spiraled from there because it does seem once a headline gets it put out, even in real life. 20 other people come forward like wait right. he also sexually harassed me I should you know mm -hmm. so right that was Michael okay. Riddle who is a theater critic and I believe he was also in uh, season one episode one he was and he is a real theater critic right yes. isn't that right yeah. okay he makes little cameos yes <laughs> yeah, he actually had lines in this episode more more than one so yay for him <laughs> Staying on the good side of the talent is what the critic is doing there. Um, okay, so so it looks like now all bets are off. We don't know what's going to happen with Bombshell. Uh, they, you know, they had smaller problems of the theater not being able to to be available to them. But now it looks like the money is not only not forthcoming, but there may be criminal issues to deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, because of Nick, right? Right. We, who was shady in the first season. Right. Even though we were cheering for the, yes. the couple yeah. them. Yeah, so <laughs> how, how, how yeah. do we feel? But tell me how yeah. you feel about that, Kendra. Well, you know, last season I was saying, oh, he's some, well, I think I said there was something shady about him, but I, I did cheer the relationship just because yes. Eileen needed a little uh, groove back. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> 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 for lack of a better, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I. I, I'm still a little wary of that guy. Well, he still seems like something's going on. Yeah, and it, it was fish. I think we were saying last season how fishy it was that he had that money to begin with mm -hmm. to give to mm -hmm. Eileen, being that he works at a bar. bar and which Derek. Is his cover. Yeah, and today in this episode, Derek kind of brings that up after the fact, now that it's out in the media. You didn't think it was. A weird <laughs> yeah. that your boyfriend who works at the bar has millions of dollars to give to you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's unlikely that a, a bartender would have that kind of money laying around. And Eileen should have known, I think, that, you know, red flag up, there's something wrong here. Well, but, but her the justification for her in season one was that he had a friend who had money. Remember, he mm. was connected to people who have, well, not connected to people who have money, but, you know, like in the mob way mm -hmm. but but he had <laughs> he, he had a somebody. friend who was you know a super mm -hmm. wealthy guy looking for an investment that was yeah. how it was fun in season one right. but wasn't there a folder or some files that she disregarded or did yes. she yeah. 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 yeah there was them. something shady going on with him but also that Alice was trying to give to her she right? became aware of it or something mm -hmm. yeah right? he told her some stuff yeah I know <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> but then if I was Eileen and she was so invested at that point trying to get that show yeah. on stage she might have in bad judgment that said and just said screw it let's get this up there let's use this money i don't care nobody's well, mm -hmm. gonna find out it's definitely a whole with her getting back at jerry she can do this on her own and now she's got this hot boyfriend to, compared to jerry, no sorry no offense the actor um but they <laughs> make it you know the younger version and of course she's her judgment's a little clouded i mean you'd hope as somebody who's a, a businesswoman but 
I think she didn't want to ask any questions because plus just in he, case she didn't want the answers. Plus, he right. made the best martini, six dollar martinis in town, or whatever that <laughs> was. Maybe that's Eight why she martinis. accepted. And she she had too to, many martinis. Yeah, she didn't have to throw them in his face. <laughs> right, she just drank them and drank them and drank them. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, he makes everything he says make sense. <laughs> <laughs> He's my boyfriend, and he's cute, and he makes six-dollar martinis. That Absolutely. was funny when she. That's the dream. The <laughs> so, uh, should we should we talk about how the, the? I'm not sure. Should we talk about the the gala at the evening at the end, or let's maybe get to that a little bit later because it sort of culminates with all these things coming together. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So. Something that you just said start, sparked me, and now I just completely lost my train of thought. Okay, so <laughs> let's um, let's move on to Julia. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll talk about let's talk about Julia for a second. So Julia and her men. Mm. Julia's having issues with Frank. Um, we thought the issues were over, mm. that they were back together and everything was happy and hunky dory after they, you know, he went with her to Boston, was there. It was a little bit uh, a little bit rough, and then lo and behold, we see him kissing on, or at least. Was being very intimately, right. it was a little overly with. friendly. Thank you. That's yeah. it. Overly very friendly. comfortable. Yeah. That's correct. Appropriate. Yes. Right. right. <laughs> with you a gal see. with a zipper down the back of her her skirt, which just was look, you know, that just looked trampy right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that saying. implied all kinds of. It right? certainly <laughs> did. Yes. It certainly did. Well, she did the arm grab at the end, and that's definitely a very intimate, like, oh, hello there. Right. You know? mm -hmm. Well, and I thought they were going to spin it as she was his, you know, cousin, former, yeah. you know, whatever. But superintendent at his school, that smells all kind of sexy, juicy scandal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. And it, it's so sad because we really thought, well, in the last season, it ended with them trying to reconcile and you know the son was happy that they're trying to mm -hmm. reconcile mm -hmm. and it made you kind of want to root for them again even though Julia has made this crazy mistake in her relationship and we and then now it's it's not over mm -hmm. now we've got to worry about infidelity possibly on the other side and once you know when that happens you know it might be the point of no return for them yeah for me at least it would be the point I of no return I don't see Frank as going through with it, though. I don't think he has the... Cheating? Yeah. I don't think... Even though he kind of makes that threat, like, you know, to, to even up even out the score, I don't see him doing anything. It's but still a it, problem because there's no trust there anymore. Right. And, and also, it was weird that he denied it at first mm -hmm. when she confronted him. Mm -hmm. He didn't say... Yes, that's my coworker. It really, it was nothing. He said no, I wasn't anywhere with he anybody. Wanted her to feel what he felt when she first did that to him. So that was just payback right. at yeah. that point. Mm. Yeah, I that's thought what it, I think it wasn't so much him defending that his that he may or may may mm. have ha be having an affair or maybe thinking about having an affair. He just wanted to hurt her, inflict pain. Mm. I thought he he knew even though he didn't technically do anything wrong, which I don't. I agree. I don't think he did. Mm -hmm. um, but even having those thoughts, he felt was wrong. And when you feel something's wrong, I would say nine times out of ten, you lie about it. Right. Because if you have nothing to hide, why, would, why wouldn't he say something? I, I, feel I feel like he's thinking those thoughts only because he, he feels like he's telling himself, I need to get back at her. I need to try this out to kind of retaliate. And it might not even be conscious. It could be just a subconscious spiteful thing within mm -hmm. him like, oh, I went through all this crap for this woman and now she thinks I'm doing something like, fine. I'm just going to go do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't because I'm not that type of guy. Well, no, I think, <laughs> I think he's definitely trying to even the score. I don't think his motives for not telling her though was like, I'm going to make her guess. I think he was thinking, I wanted to even the score that's wrong and I'm guilty for even kind of flirting with that oh, idea that's okay. that's what I meant so even mm -hmm. considering it is sort of a, a step toward the wrong direction and he feels bad exactly about okay okay like his hand was in the cookie jar but he couldn't reach the cookie yeah he, <laughs> and, he, and he like, so like his fingerprints <laughs> were on the jar <laughs> And All he didn't right, want to admit to it. it. His yeah. hands were okay. on the muffins. I think he felt bad that he wanted. <laughs> In the cookie jar, the muffins are over there. Oh, let me go get the muffins. <laughs> but that was enough for Julia to effectively move out. Yes. Yeah. Well, that event and then the 
What, what? Tell me what you have to say it out loud. You can't I'm, just do that with your book, face. <laughs> <laughs> Did the viewer see that? Can read it with her mind. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't even know why she did move out. I, I mean, I know she was affected by the whole situation, but if she wanted to keep working on it, why not just kind of keep going? Right. Um, so, wha- I mean, what was the what was the last straw for you guys with her? What made her move out? Yeah. It just seemed was it him challenging her back at the party? What, which, which is a scene I didn't see. Oh, so that's yeah. why you guys have to talk right now well, because uh, I can't talk. No, I think. I don't, I don't think she intended to move out. It was when Tom said, why don't you just stay here? Because she was just going to crash for a few days and think about it, you know. I think she was going to go back and work on it. Mm. But didn't she say to him, she was like, well, I don't know how, I, I'm not saying this, so don't quote quote me on <laughs> it from, from what, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a derivative of this. But didn't she basically say, like, we were trying, but obviously it, it really, you, who are we fooling to an extent? Because... Mm-hmm. I, I feel like they tried, but there's probably something that they could never fix. There was that one piece that would never make them whole again. And I think that was such a big issue to him. And now with him even, again, flirting with this idea, I think that was something that really broke them apart even more. I Well, at the time when that confrontation was happening, and it was so embarrassing to watch <laughs> yeah. for Julia and, and for him, I, I took it as just another big blowout fight. I didn't think mm. he, she was going to move out that soon or, any, or mm. you know, officially move out like that. Mm. I thought it was just another well, big hump in the road. The thing is, is in the past, she slept at their office when she was having challenges. You know, she, but she, this, this time she, Tom said, stay here, and she did, and the next thing you know, a week has passed. Now, part of it is, too, that, that she got bad reviews. Mm-hmm. She specifically was called in in the reviews because they were saying Ivy was good, but that, you know, Julia looks to have lost her mojo, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. So those two things coming together made her get to the point of, I can't face anything anymore. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, all the big things in her life were all falling apart at the same right. time. Right. And, yeah. and, and then, you know, the other part of the story that she didn't actually know yet was that there was rumors going around, there were rumors going around town that she had a nervous breakdown and that she and Tom were also breaking up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when she finds that out, then she's really going down into the downward spiral. So how do you come back from all of that? You stay. You probably do what she's couch. doing. Yeah, <laughs> you you bury yourself in your bed with the sheets over. Your what cuff. did she? Yeah. She was eating bananas and peanut butter last last year, wasn't it? Uh, I feel like. Yes, well, yeah, yeah, technically it was. it was last year. It was yeah. last year. Maybe that's what she was missing this time around. Maybe she would have gotten in bed a little earlier. She <laughs> bananas she and peanut some butter. Needed potassium. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> she was deficient. At the end of the episode, um, Tom says to her, "You got to stop it with the scarves." And what's, right. what's funny about that, and it's it's in the it's in the news. It's in the news. Yeah, yeah. people complaining that. about how frumpy uh, the character Ju- Julia <laughs> looks on the show. So I oh. think that that's the way of addressing the th- that commentary in this mm-hmm. episode. They had Tom just kind of laugh it off in a, in a side comment in the episode. Actually, I love speaking of side comments that happened right around there where he's like, why don't you move in? It could be like some sort of sitcom. Yeah. yeah. And I was, I mean, Will and Grace. Will and Grace. Yeah. Yeah. Very funny. That was my big laugh of the night. And Sean Hayes will be on, on there one. later. So. He will be. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Interesting, is right? It, is mm-hmm. he, do we know if he's going to be the new love interest? or? Well, he's the one where we saw him with I whatever Ivy ends up on later in the previews. Oh, that kind right. of the new um old older Marie Antoinette looking yeah. kind of mm-hmm. period Musical. costume. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that that will be interesting. And yeah, the little I like the little, you know, asides that go in there. There were a, there were one or two that I could tell were asides that were a little over my head, so I didn't catch them all, but I like <laughs> it when they do those in the show. And because we go on right after the show airs, you have to forgive us because we're just working on the knowledge we have. We can't we can't go do a ton of research before we come up, but we're doing our best. Yeah, and we had a different television for half of it too. And so yeah, roll with it. You you yeah. missed yeah. Um, exactly. You weren't there, Tamara, but um, Eileen mentioned the whole drink splashing on the oh, face thing again. That's funny. So I mean, she didn't do it, but she kind of like <laughs> said. If you don't leave now, you might get another drink splashed in your face. <laughs> so it so she brought it back. 
So, so it appears they're sort of listening, maybe learning yeah. from their fr from their not necessarily mistakes, but but Critiques. things that happened in the first mm -hmm. season, and maybe things are coming back around. Um, I want to thank all of our listeners for listening to us on iTunes and for the downloads. We have, I believe, sixty shows a week going out on After Buzz, and we're. 20, what, how many, Marissa, how many downloads? 20 million a week. 20 million wow. downloads a week, right. which is absolutely incredible. We are so thankful to our listeners for supporting us that way. And mm -hmm. please continue to support us by rating, preferably high ratings, and, <laughs> and comments on iTunes. It really helps us out a lot when you do that. So please tell a friend about After Buzz. Um, listen to shows, rate and comment, and we thank you for those things. When you do them, we really appreciate it. We really mm -hmm. do. Yes. So next, I want to talk about Karen and Ivy. Let's talk about the two divas and what is going on there. Huge rift between the two of them mm -hmm. with last season's finale, um, with Ivy having slept with Karen's fiance, mm -hmm. Dev. That's so fiance good. now, I think. And yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. X everything. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm missing my um, my X. dev eye candy. But oh, just just real P.S. real quick about <laughs> Ellis moving to Cleveland. Oh yeah, so happy about that one. Yeah, we got our we wish got on we that one. We did. We did. <laughs> Gone. I love it. Um, okay, so Ivy and Karen. Car Ivy is having a crisis of conscience. Mm -hmm. yes. Crisis of career, crisis of choices, um, because she's not perhaps going to be renewed with this show. Um, Derek is shunning her, and he he's just he's just a whole big mess in this episode. We're going to talk about him in a minute. <laughs> he's yeah. a funny mess, though. And then yes, and then we meet uh, a former friend of hers on the street. Mm -hmm. who is now in stationery, in the stationery business. If it was Lisa Lynn. And much happier. Mm -hmm. Much happier. Yeah. So it's causing <laughs> Ivy to really think about things. So so let's let's talk about Ivy, and what do you guys think about that? <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're definitely seeing the repercussions of what happened in at the end of last season after she did sleep with Karen's ex-fiance. Um, the whole last season, Karen is... You know, she was trying to connect with Ivy, and they mm -hmm. actually yes. developed a friendship by mm -hmm. the end of it, yes. singing together and everything. And she's, we think, softened up Ivy mm -hmm. and vice versa. Of course, the, ap the last episode, everything goes to hell. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now we're seeing that in this season, Karen is no longer bending over backwards for Ivy or trying to be her friend. She definitely knows that she doesn't deserve what was done to her by Ivy. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it's very different to watch this new confidence and intolerance that Karen has for, for Ivy now. Mm -hmm. Because every time Ivy tries to reach out or reconcile or maybe have an apology, Karen just pretty much gives her the... You know, yeah, the, hand. Cold, the hand. Exactly. Cold shoulder. Cold Don't shoulder. Don't talk to me. Not you can get interested. the next elevator. It doesn't matter <laughs> what you have to say. And I think a little bit of that comes from Karen's confidence because oh, we didn't mention Jennifer Hudson being in this episode, um, singing and us being able to see a, you know, a little glimpse into the life that Karen is about to step into. That's what everyone is telling her. Mm -hmm. And so she's got a little bit of this confidence. Her dreams are starting to come true. She realizes that she's... Um, you know, a powerful woman. She had a lot of the um, confidence challenges in the first season. Mm -hmm. A lot of the conversations that she right. was having with Dev were over, what am I doing? Why am I here? You know, and so this season she's starting off on a much stronger foot, um, but then gets a little bit of the wind knocked out of her with the show not being renewed and has to go back to her day job. Which mm -hmm. is waiting table. She's yeah. got the apron back on mm. in this episode. <laughs> but she was still a fighter. I, I thought during the episode, I think earlier Karen would have, you know, crawled a little, you know, huddled up in a ball a little bit more. But right. Right. this time she's like, okay, well, this isn't going to happen and I'm sad, but this guy's got something. I still have Derek on my side. People right. saw the show and liked me. And she's doing, you know, right. she's trying to make moves. Right. Mm -hmm. she's, she's definitely being more assertive than yes. she was. I think all the success she had during the Boston run probably really lit her fire like mm -hmm. she it gave her much more confidence to keep on moving forward because 
she did so well and she got great reviews for it on in the press and amongst her peers mm -hmm. yep so and she's the, ready say, best revenge is uh being mm -hmm. successful right success yes right. and dev and ivy she's showing them and she's not letting it stop her because even though bombshell is kind of up in the air right now She's found this guy, and we can talk about, he's one of the new characters, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a um, butt munch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to think of a not bad word Your to say. Today. <laughs> <It's like laughs> I'm such a nurse. Sarah okay. coming up with her fifth grade reference <laughs> to people she doesn't like. Well, what did they say in the uh, doo doo bat, doo doo, -doo, -doo head. <laughs> All of these and hashtags. <laughs> anyway, she's found this talented guy, <laughs> and she sees opportunity in it. Um, oh in that this guy could maybe fill a spot somewhere in a show that they might do, be it Bombshell or whatever else. And she's pretty much stalking this guy. Right. Um, set on, you know, maybe collaborating or something with him. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, let's finish. Let's Before we go more into Jimmy, let's talk a little just more about the, the Ivy and Karen Mm -hmm. situation. So Ivy comes around to Karen after consulting with Julia, Julia. Mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. what do I do because I sort of can't live with myself mm -hmm. um, and then goes and apologizes to Karen. Right. Because under Julia's yeah suggestion of apologizing for the why not for the what mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I have to say I, I thought the apology was really genuine on Ivy's part. I don't, I don't think she was just saying it just to make up and you know, brush it under the rug. I think she actually felt sorry for what she did. What do you guys think about the difference between how Ivy was last season? Because she was, she was very confident. She was the diva. She was the one who was certain of herself at all times. Then she had the, you know, let's just call it substance abuse is, abuse issues that came out of, um, you know, injuries and having challenges with her mother. Um, and now she's coming back, a member of the ensemble, kind of taken down a few notches. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you think she has the ability to come back? Is she is she forever broken? It's what do you funny because when she sang at that event, she was the old Ivy. Yes. You know, so I think she's there. Yes. But everyone else is kind of reminding her of, of the faults that she, you know, that she has. Yeah. I think we'll see her get back to her confident self. I don't think that slightly conniving Ivy is gone. I just think she's beaten down. Mm -hmm. By the time she gets back up, which it seems like she might, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to dislike her again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like Karen so much, so I root for her right. so much all the time. And Even with Ivy's apology, I knew she meant it, but I think when, the, when she gets back a little bit more on top again, I don't think mm -hmm. she's going to be nearly as nice. Well, and I, I think that part of the reason why they sort of brought Ivy back down and and are you know changing her how she's presenting herself right now is partly because she was becoming an unsympathetic character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> And as much as you know, we love the villains sometimes, and she's so talented, and we've talked about that mm -hmm. you know yeah. many many times. Megan Hilty being so talented um, that I think she was becoming an unsympathetic character, and they were kind of trying to to sort of reset the balance between the two of them, so it, there wasn't quite so much Team Karen, you know. On top, kind of thing. There are new um, writers and new showrunners show yeah. on the show this season, and so I think we can see some of those changes mm -hmm. taking place and some some of the equilibrium perhaps being restored. I do yeah. want to uh, point out something, though. Um, I do believe that in the apology, she was sincere. Mm -hmm. Yes, but. Um, remember when she approached Julia in that scene where she wants to know what she should do mm -hmm. her she's coming from the position of she says I will do anything to stay in this show let me know what I can do because I just want to be a part of it so it's not how do I patch up my my relationship, relationship. with mm -hmm. Karen it's how do I stay in the show because this has been my dream? You know, mm -hmm. it's more so focused still on that s on selfishness, mm -hmm. what she wants for herself. She's not really caring m about this other person. It's not primarily caring Not primarily. About that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sure she does, you know, to a certain degree, but it was first, how can I stay in this show? I know I've screwed up. Mm -hmm. Now what can I do about it? I think that's a really good point. 
So so we do see a little bit of that, you know, IV yeah. um, manipulator perhaps, still a, a little core of that still in there. It just feels like mm -hmm. she's such a lost, as talented as she is, she's still just kind of searching for scraps. Like she's so greedy for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, even though she's such a talented person, she it's never enough for her. Right. And she's not really open to learning how to be humbled, really, and really admitting the why, as they said, of what she did was wrong mm -hmm. or why she did it. Kendra, speak. Kendra's going to smi smile on her face. <laughs> no, I love sitting next to Kendra because it's always like this. <laughs> it's because it's like you're just chipping away. No, I, <laughs> it's funny because I see it as the opposite. I, I, I didn't see any, you know... Um, negative uh, intentions on her part in this. So you didn't so see far. the selfishness. No, it. I didn't okay. see any of that. Any any interaction she had with Derek or with Karen, it it I felt like she kind of had her tail between her legs. Like it never, I never felt like she was doing it for an an alternate reason. Okay. Yeah. Especially okay, at the end of the episode, her tail was really way between. Yeah. Legs. But <laughs> if they can, yeah. Tamara's like, what are they talking about? Over <laughs> Maybe. I no, don't know. I mean, I don't know. I just, I didn't see it. I think, um, I think she, she does love, you know, the, the art and the singing and everything, but I, I don't feel like it's a cutthroat attitude this time. Do, mm -hmm. But do you still think that she's got it in her? Or do you think that Ivy has reformed mm -hmm. and is now a good girl? Like when I mean, she hits fame again in her, you know, new show with Sean Hayes, what do you think she's gonna be like? I don't think she'll be cutthroat then either. I, she may be, you know. So, so you think she sort of learned her lesson? Is that in a sense, yeah? Okay. And because you could even see when um, Derek, Derek was meeting with Karen and she was getting on the elevator and she could overhear him saying, "Oh, that was nothing. You know, nothing important." <laughs> Bless, Bless you. you. Sorry. And. Mm -hmm. uh, you could kind of see again her shoulders fall and you know she felt defeated again so it's almost like how can I prove myself I in a genuine way not like how can I get to the top and stab everyone in the back it was more like how can I prove myself again you know yeah. that's, that's what I felt and I'm not <laughs> saying I'm right so <laughs> No. <laughs> from the previews, I know. I noticed. From the previews, I noticed that um, they're kind of removing the characters just from the world of Bombshell. Even from this episode with this new guy and the potential of a new independent musical that they might mm. be creating. Yes. The characters are being removed from just being in Bombshell. Um, so maybe those new opportunities are going to take off that pressure are you making a prediction should i <laughs> no i will hold my yes, prediction <laughs> you should that, that was our pattern last year we used to predict we before just we wanna predicted i know by the time we go, as i said 15 minutes ago I know. <laughs> <laughs> so um so but remember now karen had ivy fired yeah well okay. she didn't technically say anything it was this you know, you it say the she, word, and she then wanted, she wanted her said. fired. Technically, she no, wanted I know. her fired. Technically, schmechnically, she had her fired. I'm trying to get her off on a technicality. <laughs> However, <laughs> but Ivy accepted that. She said she did the right thing. Right. Yeah. You right. can't fire me, I quit. That's what she should have. <laughs> <Right, exactly. laughs> Throw a drink in her face. Throw a, yeah. Yeah. Throw a drink in her face. So is there is there the possibility of a, you know, bonding, amending between the two of these girls, do you think? Anybody? Not that might, that anytime time. soon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we'll see any best friends. I, at the very least, they'll mend it enough to be able to stay in the same elevator together. But I doubt. Okay. I think there's too many, too many wounds there. Mm -hmm. okay. And not only, it's a whole dev thing. Even though Derek left Ivy, I think she, st she thinks that Karen is stealing him away. In, in some regard. Mm -hmm. So, because she obviously still cares about Derek. Ah, got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, so then the the last scene at the American Theater Wing Gala. No, it wasn't the last scene. It was the, you know, the big culminating scene. Um, really embarrassing with Julia mm -hmm. going up to Margot Martindale, who, mm -hmm. uh, whose character name I don't remember, uh, the obviously the grand dame of the event, and saying, can't wait to go do my little presentation. <laughs> and Margaret Martindale's basically just humiliated her again. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but then they circled the wagons and Eileen and Tom and Derek and Julia and Ivy all came together and presented the song from Bombshell. Uh, they, they just keep moving the line. I think that's the title of the song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Amazing> <laughs> sure, why not? It's okay. <laughs> Ama amazing performance by Megan Hilty. Uh, yeah. Amazing performance by Same. Ivy. And um, Eileen sort of taking back the power of the rumors of things with, you know, we're ruined, we're finished. No, as a matter of fact, we're not finished. So she was definitely making a statement. But uh, they, they, Karen was on tap to do that first, was mm -hmm. not available, and so then Ivy came back in. And so and for me, it felt like um, it was kind of Ivy getting a little bit of her mojo back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Agreed. she belted that song out. She did indeed. <laughs> she even told Derek that when she went to go visit him at the end, you know, I need to thank you for that, and you know, the fact that she was able to go out there and kind of help save the day, as they yes. said. I think that definitely helped her. Yes. And who knows who saw her? Absolutely. In that, right. in that whole room. entire, uh, the whole entire theater, somebody sitting there like, I need a new lead, and here's this person who was phenomenal, mm -hmm. right? And in a show that's questionable, even though it's still going, still kind of questionable. Because mm, right. they don't have any money, even though they're allowed to make it. Right. So. But so do you think that that, um, the fact that Ivy sang the, the part that Karen would have in this situation is going to have repercussions between the two of them? Or is it just sort of, no. it's over, it's done, let's move forward? Well, it was funny because Karen said, I was in the subway when they called me. Yeah. You know, she still had that grudge. Mm -hmm. So it's still, there's still that. I don't think I don't think that Karen's angry about it because she knew she just wasn't available. Mm -hmm. But I think she is, like you said, she's using it, it. Yeah, right. To yeah. sting Ivy back a little bit, right? Because she knows Derek thinks of her as Marilyn. I don't think there's any question in her mind right. that that's the part for her in his show. Yes, mm -hmm. but yes. it is gonna. I think it's gonna be something that'll pick Ivy up in the other show that we mm -hmm. see her in. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about Jimmy. Jimmy, the um, <laughs> butt muncher, I believe. Was <laughs> butt <laughs> munch. Hashtag butt munch. <laughs> Jimmy butt munch. <laughs> butt munch. Um, and okay, so Such he was a child sometimes. He was he was a big jerk. Uh, we don't need anybody else. Okay, so the the thing that that kind of frustrated about me m me about him was he looks like a and I said this last season, he looks like a stereotype one-dimensional character at this point. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that, that it will, that they'll get further into it. But um, I, I don't remember exactly what his line one was, but it was something like, okay, we, well, we do it on our own. We don't need any help. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth of the matter is two guys who work in a bar who are writing a musical on menus, they do need help. Mm -hmm. and Only he's, when he's drunk, though. Otherwise, it's not right. written anywhere. He's ridiculous <laughs> and naive to think he doesn't need help because mm -hmm. you there's because everybody needs somebody. You've got to get your foot in the door. But then by the end, he was he was actually saying um, something about how the the intent of it was something like you know I just write it for me anyway. So where is he coming from? Is he coming from I'm writing a Broadway musical or is he coming from I write music for me and nobody else should ever listen to it? I think it's his defense mechanism. Like, he's just, you know, protecting what he really feels because he feels like he'll get rejected. Right. You know? Right. So he and he thinks that uh, Karen is too big for her britches and, and yeah. she's... Well, he's definitely the new yeah. green person of right. the series. Mm -hmm. And not only is he green, he's, he's got some rejection issues. Yes. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. fearful. Which yes. makes him greener <laughs> than green. So, yeah. I mean, I just, I felt it was a little one-dimensional and um, and that there wasn't a lot of depth there. with Just within the writing, I thought his performance was fine. I just feel like, and maybe they just he needed to get it quickly. Although they had two hours. Oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, uh <laughs> so it, that bothered me a little bit, but I'm intrigued by Jimmy. I'm intrigued by Jimmy and uh, uh -huh. that's Kyle. really Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Yes. Yeah, his. I um, loved Kyle. He was me so too. cute. And he, he's got it's like <laughs> with he, his playbills and everything. Yeah. And he was a little bit of a fanboy. I thought he was cute too. I yeah. liked him too. Yeah, seems like not, he has not a cute. crush. No, on not Jimmy, a crush. Right? Like I'd like like Sweet. little teddy oh. bear. Like, I want to. Pat but, him on the head. Yeah. Well, what I was saying is, it seems like he has a crush on Jimmy. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. His childhood friend. Yeah. Yes. Are we thinking Jimmy swings that way? Can I ask that? No, I don't think he does. No. Well, because Kyle all but said, oh, he's not 
and never finished the sentence. So I thought, I, I assumed that what he was saying was he's not gay. But um, thought, but then there was the line that Jimmy said that's in when after they were arguing, um, him and Kyle, he said, well, I made co- the coffee this morning. I was like, wait. What, that's yeah, something that was like I felt like that speak, was a, wasn't it? Oh, yes. okay, but I I automatically thought boyfriend girlfriend or boyfriend boyfriend girlfriend right. whatever uh, speak. Mm, I think that was roommate speak. Yeah, I think it was roommate. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and actually, for a second there, I thought they were brothers. For a little while during their during their argument at the end, mm-hmm. unloading the truck, I actually thought got oh, a brother vibe when there. You said growing up, I mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I've always I always stuck up for you growing up. Yeah. So it's it, you know I don't think it's a romantic connection between mm. the two of them. Um, but I'm not sure what but it is. One likes Kyle, kind of likes him, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One sided, one sided romance. Oh. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because yeah. he was like, "Do you think? But do you think we look like a couple? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> could we? Could we maybe be a couple? Right. <laughs> In my dreams. Oh, he's so cute. Um, but he, you know, they're they're obviously uh, posturing this so that Kyle and Jimmy's music could be the next Rent, which was a you know groundbreaking musical. Mm-hmm. Um, so and they're they're actually showing parts of it because the the coming ups for tonight were not just next week's coming up; they were kind of doing coming ups for the whole season. So oh, yeah, some of that gets produced in some way, whether it's a showcase or something. Mm-hmm, yeah, there's some of that being produced, and it looks that kind of. Um, urban, um, more rock kind of um, musical, like mm-hmm. like Rent has been. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what do we think about that? They're they're going to be. Is this going to be the new musical? Is Bombshell going to die? It sounds like there's going to be multiple projects that we're following. Okay. Um, so, a lot of the times, I feel like in this industry and even our industry and in, in Hollywood there's a lot of pressure because people tend to think there's not enough to go around and that's why they kind of fight for yes. fight for everything but i think maybe this is going to show like hey there is enough to go around around there's mm-hmm. a lot of projects out there maybe megan didn't make it to maryland but she's going to have this other deal and these kids who are green they're going to get their break and mm-hmm. megan or karen still gets her show um hopefully mm-hmm. bombshell or whatever she's going to be doing next I don't know. So I think that's going to be really cool to see how everybody blossoms, even if it's in different directions or different shows. Or maybe Bombshells, it, it gets going because in Broadway, you'll have the original cast for a while until right. like potentially the Tony Awards. And then they release different people. Like I remember when I saw yeah. Wicked, you know, Adina Menzel was still in it, but Kristen Chenoweth was gone mm-hmm. and Joel Grey. So you get part of that. And I think maybe it, I think it almost needs to make a hit. Uh, during the show and then you do almost need to start something new right. because there's only so many songs you can do based on Marilyn Monroe's right, absolutely. life. And we, you know, we talked about that in season one. We, I, I predicted on day one that opening night would be the finale but then we were discussing what the heck are they going to do for season two mm-hmm. and with all the changes in staff, you know, there were I, we, we couldn't figure out what was going to happen and I don't think they could either. So, but it appears that, you know, you've got to have some venue for, for mm-hmm. more music and it can't just be a lot of bar scenes with people singing karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that's where it gets sticky because I think Meg, uh, Megan's character, Ivy, doesn't she kind of take over for certain parts that Karen is yes. doing? And yes. so maybe Karen's juggling two shows and it's right. And Ivy's so there could be more her. conflict. We, we love conflict. That's right. like good TV. Okay, we're running out of time. Let's quick do our news and gossip. Anybody? After Buzz TV News. I know we wanted to talk uh, about briefly if Catherine McPhee on. Uh, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon with yeah. Russell Brand was just hilarious. That video is going viral <laughs> on on YouTube and on different news websites. But so it, it was a funny introduction of Catherine McPhee mm-hmm. and Russell Brand. Russell Brand was on the show and Catherine McPhee made her entrance. And upon her entrance, it was obvious that Russell Brand was digging <laughs> yeah. Catherine McPhee. He's a single man now. <laughs> yeah, and he even says, you can, you can come yeah. sit over here on my lap. And he, like, brings her onto his lap and actually starts bouncing her, which is kind of awkward but hilarious <laughs> yeah. at the same time. And she's like, whoa, what, what is going on? Because... You know, Catherine, she's such a poised, yes. very proper yes. young woman. Yeah. She's very close to Karen, I think. Yes, yeah. very close to Karen. And um, so she finally gets off his lap. But throughout her interview with Jimmy, Russell kind yeah. of interjects and 
is just flirting with her the whole time and says like I'd like to exchange numbers with you and and all this stuff and <laughs> Karen has to kind of set him straight and say well, I was at the game with my husband. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, then he weekend. then he retracted like, oh, never mind then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me, um, I'm going to go outside. Yeah, he, he actually does make his exit. He yeah. says, you know, now that I know that you're married, I'm leaving. Bye, everybody. Yeah. He, actually, oh he actually makes his exit at that point from yeah. the stage, which wow. is hilarious. That's um, very funny yeah. and very embarrassing. And then you said that uh, you knew that about the 49ers what was it? The direct? Yeah, the Catherine McPhee was in the direct TV Beach Bowl um, playing. I think she was part of, there was a blue team and a white team, and if I, I believe she was part of the white team. And um, I had to look at the footage at work. So I was like, oh, there's Catherine McPhee that she went to the Super Bowl. and Yeah, she's know, a 49ers fan. Everything. Yes, she was. Yeah. Is, was. <laughs> We're sad. And <laughs> she, she men- mentioned, though, that um, it's funny how she got into the game being a 49ers fan because – she was invited to a New York Jets game, mm-hmm. and she said she kind of sneaked to the other side because they were playing the 49ers that day. Oh, that's funny. And she got <laughs> their number, and then that's how she made it to the Super Bowl. Made it to oh, the wow. Super Bowl. Interesting. Um, and then one more thing. The new showrunner is Josh Safran. And I just wanted to point out, he, he did an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, uh-huh. and he was saying that he wanted one of the things he wanted to do is get rid of the characters that he call, that he says has short shelf lives <laughs> short shelf lives mm-hmm. right um and that includes julia's husband so we won't see much oh, of okay. him spoilers guys dev so i guess there will not be a reconciliation so sorry. and mm. praise be to the lord and heavens ellis is Off not going to be back <laughs> yay we got Isn't what we wanted a, into the a special episode from cleveland yes no 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 no, no. no very oh, special no, cleveland episode that one's airing next week because there's yeah. no episode right exactly <laughs> he, um, he might be sorry. like the nicest guy in real life or something uh, we should i hope so he probably is. Is. Yeah. um very quickly there was a tribute to marvin hamlish um show on PBS on New Year's Eve that uh, Megan Hilty was part of. Also, our very own Beth Bears did a phenomenal number in this. So if you get a chance, look for the tribute to Marvin Hamlish on PBS. It was a it was a really um, touching, beautiful, and talent-packed um, event, and it was it's really worth watching if you're a Broadway fan, do watch. Sweet. So, uh, yes, ma'am. Just lastly, I guess, um, and, and not least, of course, uh, yes just an announcement that sometime this season we'll be hearing from Leslie Odom Jr. <gasps> oh, yes. again. He's going to join Here us on in studio Afterbus. hopefully. Yes, yes. yes. Awesome. If not in studio, on the phone. But yeah. He, he, he was a great Sam. interview last season. Yeah. So oh, we're looking cool. forward to that very much. Yes. Okay, quickly, any predictions? We kind of covered some of them. Anything else you want to add in? And now, <laughs> More Rockettes coming out uh, okay. accusing Derek. Uh, okay. <laughs> Derek dancers. You think that's going to go? That storyline? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's okay. what I'm saying. I'm just asking. Come on, quick. Um, go quick. Uh, goodness. Ellis pops in and... Uh, <laughs> no. I won't allow it. <laughs> I think uh, we're going to see some problems with um, Eileen and Nick coming up. Because okay. we didn't really mm-hmm. see him that much. And um, love triangle. Because I think Karen's starting to have some sort of feelings towards Derek. But then this Jimmy guy... I think she's starting to like the bad boys. Okay. I'm looking forward to some um, hot bodies because we've lost Dev. <laughs> I'm very sad about it. And mm. they need to replace him with something well, good. Well, Jimmy, right? Yeah, he doesn't do it for me. Hot but, bodies, um, though. No, I mean, Jennifer oh. Hudson, guys, looks she amazing. She looks awesome. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. wait to see she how, how she gets intertangled with, with Ivy, it looked like. Yes. So, right. yes, it's going to be interesting. Karen's mentor, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I yeah. believe so. I yeah. believe so. Sarah, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Sarah with an H Mendoza. Kendra. I'm at Kendra Cabasel, K-E-N-D-R-A-K-A-B-A-S-E-L-E. Ms. And Kristen. you can find me, uh, now I have a personal one, Kristen, <laughs> K-R-I-S-T-I-N, Carol, C-A-R-O-L-E, 13 on Twitter. And then also my website's the fan, F-A-N, 2-C, T-O-S-E-E. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Tamara Berg. Uh, you can also look at my website, TamaraCentral.com, and we are all on other shows as well. What what other show are you on? Uh, you can catch Any me on shows? Glee on Thursday nights, and the newsroom when it's 
happening. Kendra, yeah, I'll be on in the newsroom. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing Walking Dead starting Sunday, Ooh, and um, got Walking to go Dead. on the red carpet today, so we'll be having interviews oh, with the that. cast That's awesome. coming up. That's so. exciting. Um, I also yeah. do Justified and Downton Abbey. Marissa, anything you want to tell us about you? I do. Whoops. I do Glee and Once Upon a Time. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you for sticking with us tonight. It was a long episode, and uh, we are we are now back up to speed, back yes. into mm -hmm. our groove, and so we will see you next week. Two weeks. In two weeks. Yeah. Two, two weeks. Smash. Two February weeks for 19th. Smash. Thanks yeah. for joining us. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later, smashers. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.